This is White's 909 aluminium hardtail. It sits at the top of White's 130 mil trail hardtail range. White have used highly sculpted uh, alloy on the frame, uh, especially sort of around the seat and chain stays. And that's to give plenty of room for the rear tire and I guess in theory, a little bit of compliance. However, with this frame, we've sort of found that it isn't particularly compliant. It's not the most comfortable ride we've uh, ever ridden. It's probably harsher out there, but it certainly lacks sort of a little bit of give that uh, is quite useful on, on a hardtail like this. One of the things we've often praised White for in the past is their geometry. They were one of the earlier adopters of longer and slacker bikes. And the 909 is now actually relatively average. It's a 27.5 inch wheeled bike, so the 66.5 degree head angle is reasonably but not super slack. Uh, there's a reach of 459 millimetres, which is pretty much bang on average these days. But what is nice is the 305 mil bottom bracket height, which is pretty low. This means that your weight is nice and low in the bike, which is good for cornering uh, and general stability at speed. At the back end, 425 mil chainstays is pretty short. Again, we've seen shorter, but it gives a nice sort of balance to the reasonably long front end. One thing where the bike does fall down though is the height at the front. The 461 mil stack is relatively high for a hardtail. It compares to sort of anything from about 430 up to 450, which I'd say is pretty average. The real problem though for white comes with the headset spacer on top of the FSA headset, which is conical uh, and adds quite a lot to your bar height. And this can't really be removed by say dropping the stem. Even if you drop the stem, the bars are still pretty high. Generally speaking, on steeper terrain, having a high bar height isn't a bad thing. It keeps your weight relatively far back and it keeps the front end nice and high. Where it falls down though is on more flowing trails or trails which aren't particularly steep. And what it means is that the front end feels kind of high, kind of ponderous. Uh, it is slightly more suited to a beginner rider, but if you are a little bit more advanced, you might find this detracts from the feel of the ride. The other problem with this is that in effect, it shortens the bike. So if you have a bike which isn't particularly long, you might want to drop the bars and this gives a little extra length to the bike. Uh, but likewise, if a bike is too sort of long, then raising the bars will shorten it. If you've got a bike which is of average length, but a high bar height, on those trails which aren't super steep, you might find the bike feels a little shorter than it might otherwise suggest from the geometry chart alone. So although the frame is relatively harsh, White have gone down the route of putting high volume tyres onto wider rims. WTB provide the tyres and there's a 2.4 inch trail boss at the front and a 2.4 inch riddler at the back. These are mounted onto WTB i29 rims, which give a real good volume to the tyres. This means you can get away with slightly lower pressures, which gives more grip and also a little bit more compliance. We do like the tyre combo in dry summer conditions, but as you can see from the tread, it's not particularly aggressive. So when the trail is a little bit softer or a little bit wetter, you will find that you might want to change them out for something a bit more aggressive. Up front is a performance level Fox 34, and this comes with their grip damper. It's got three positions, open, firm, and closed. What we've found with the grip damper is that it isn't as sophisticated as the Fit 4 found on higher end forks. It's a little bit less plush, it's a little bit less composed, and really on balance, forks such as sort of one of the entry level pikes maybe is a little bit more suitable. But that said, this is just a first ride, so we would like a little bit more time just to sort of see if we can get the most out of it. Drivetrain wise, we've got a Shimano XT transmission with a pair of aluminium race face turbine cranks. XT is a stalwart of sort of mid to high end trail bikes, and it is good to see here. One thing we've sort of noticed with XT, certainly with the latest generation, is that some shifters have a real nice, light, positive feel, and some of them, for some reason, feel pretty heavy. Uh, and on the white 909, on this particular test bike at least, the shift feel for pulling the cable through, so moving to a larger sprocket, it feels really heavy and it's, it's not great. Uh, we're not really sure why this is the case, but um, a little bit of digging around, changing cable routing and, and a bit of extra grease wouldn't go amiss, but this is from the box. It doesn't feel amazing. The other thing which is slightly disappointing with the current generation of XT uh, is their new 11 to 46 tooth cassette. Obviously they're trying to compete with SRAM's Eagle, which provides a 10 to 50 tooth cassette uh, and also some of the extenders out there. And it is good to see a wider range cassette from Shimano. However, on the big 46 tooth sprocket at the back, unless you've got a really well oiled chain, it actually feels pretty rough and you can kind of feel the chain pulling off the teeth as you rotate the wheel. The other thing we've picked up on is the jump from the second largest to the largest sprocket is quite big. 
So if you do like to maintain quite a smooth cadence on climbs, you might find it a little distracting. It kind of is a real bailout gear and not one we'd usually use for trail riding. On a more positive note, uh, the new Shimano XT brakes on this bike are actually pretty good. If you've watched some previous bike radar videos or read previous bike radar reviews, you may have heard that we've had issues with the latest generation XT and XTR brakes with inconsistent bike points uh, seemingly coming at random. Fortunately, there has been a rolling change in the design of the caliper and the brakes as a whole. And on this current white 909, we haven't had any of those issues. Finishing off the kit then is a KS Crux seat post. It's their new, uh, more budget orientated dropper post. It comes with 125mm drop and it's cable actuated. And up front, there's a 40mm white stem and 780mm white bars. They're both aluminium. They're reasonably shaped uh, and results in quite a nice little cockpit. If we could take away the issues with the front end height, what you'd end up with is a trail bike that's a really capable bike, to be honest. The shape's pretty good with its slackish head angle, reasonably steep, but not super steep, seat angle uh, and shortish back end. The low bottom bracket helps you weight the bike into corners. The back end is pretty harsh, but if you ride a hardtail like you kind of should, you, you rely a little bit more on the front end to sort of take away the sting and sort of use the bike to hop and pop over little jumps and bumps. What is a shame is that we don't think you can quite fit plus tyres in there, but it's worth looking out for the latest generation of 2.6 inch tyres, which I think would match up really well with the white's playful and agile feel. It would certainly take some of this thing out of the back end. Overall, for £2,150, it's a reasonably good package. If we were going to nitpick, we would like to see a slightly different fork, perhaps, uh, but save for that, the rest of the kit is reasonable. As I said earlier, though, the biggest downside for me is that the front end is just a little bit too high and unfortunately that's not something you can adjust.